Holcomb, this DDI CAD cast is covering mastering of configurations. I'm Michael Nolte. Let's go and take a look at some of the items that I'm going to be covering today. So we're going to look over the creation of configurations, how we can speed that process up, uh, how we can configure dimensions, features. Uh, we'll also configure components as well. We're going to organize everything on tables and see how that works. Um, assembly level versus part level. Uh, configurable equations now. Uh, and also uh, configurations versus display states. We'll see explode views, how they're handled on configurations, and also drawings, how they're used uh, or handle the configurations. All right, so I'm going to go and open up an assembly. I'm just going to drag it from my recent there. R is the uh, the button there. I'm going to be working on this one sub-assembly of uh, this piston there. Uh, so I'm going to open up that sub-assembly. If I drag it up to the toolbar, I can open it. Or if I dropped it into the assembly, I can drag it in uh, from there. But I'm going to open it in its own separate window. Uh, and uh, specifically, the, the part that I'm looking at is I'm going to be working with this uh, connecting rod. Uh, so I'm going to just open that up. And from the part level, it's going to be the very basic level of working with configuration. We'll see here if I uh, expand out the, uh, the feature tree that you can actually see the part name and then also the configuration name. Uh, you do also get the display name showing up here at the top, uh, but we're mostly focused on the uh, uh, configuration name. Uh, there is a separate tab for configurations, uh, so it's our configuration tab. Um, the default configuration is the normal one that uh, you start with. Uh, you could actually set up your part template so it was a different name, but uh, typically uh, it's default. I'm going to go and right click and add configuration uh, is one method, or the other one is I just right click down below and um, add configuration. Keep in mind if you do have something selected though and you do a right click, it's not going to give you the appropriate menu. Uh, so make sure nothing's selected ahead of time and then do the right click and add configuration. Uh, when we go and add a configuration, it's asking for a, a name of the configuration. Uh, we could type in a separate description uh, just below uh, the box here that I'm typing in. And typically I usually don't fill anything in because I usually like my description to be the same as the configuration name and it'll auto populate. Uh, down here we do have the part number and bill material information uh, so we can set it to configuration name uh, for the part number uh, or we could do a user specified if we wanted to. Under advanced options the important one here is do we want any new features to be suppressed for this configuration and that's typically the case you want something new uh, and then we do have a few other ones uh, that I'll explain a little bit more later. Alright so let's go and hit OK there and it creates our first configuration. Uh, you'll see that it's the active configuration because of the yellow box there. To switch to the other configuration, I just do a double click. Uh, double click allows you to go back and forth between. You'll notice that the two configurations are exactly the same. Um, configurations are based off the original configuration that you started with. So I'm going to go and suppress these two fillets uh, for this configuration that I'm on. Okay. Uh, so you'll see that those are no longer there. Uh, when I go back to the, my default configuration, you'll see that those are available. So for the, uh, the manual method, it's essentially we run the configuration and we suppress the item that we, we don't want on that configuration. So you'll see on the default that those fillets are uh, available or they're unsuppressed. Uh, so typically um, what we would do is uh, switch to that configuration. Uh, let's go and take a look at the properties. I did want to point out that the uh, description did fill in uh, with the, uh, the name of the configuration here. All right, so let's uh, let's go and address a couple of things. Suppose you had a dimension that you wanted to use in, in one feature, uh, and then you had uh, something else in one of the other features that you wanted to uh, to control at the same time. Maybe we wanted to make this connecting rod a little bit thinner, so the second dimension uh, needs to change as well. Uh, so for coming up with this different version, kind of the direct way is going to double click on the feature. And if I double click on the uh, dimension itself, I do get a modify box. Uh, and I could type in the new value and uh, I would set it so that it was uh, either this config or all configs. But if I go to specify, well, I have to already have that configuration available uh, to pick it. 
which isn't real convenient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out here. And if I right click over the dimension uh, and I go and do a configure dimension, uh, this will actually open up a table for me uh, where I can actually go through and add an additional configuration here. Um, let me expand this out just a little bit. All right. So uh, I'll type in uh, my new configuration name. And I'll go and give it a value. And hit enter. And I'll go and hit OK here. Uh, so now, just that quickly, I've created a new configuration. And then that one dimension is different on that configuration. So you'll see that my connecting rod is now skinnier than it was originally. Um, all right, but that's only one dimension. So I want to build build on that, and I want to add additional changes to it. So I'm going to come back here uh, to my feature tree, double click on my um, my original feature. I'm going to right click again, and I'm going to do configure dimension. Uh, but this time, uh, rather than going through and just changing in one value at a time, I'm going to actually go and give my um, my chart here a name. So I'm actually going to type something in here uh, and save it. And this now becomes a solid workspace table uh, just by the, the saving process there. So while this dialog is open, now I can double click on my other feature, double click on my dimension, uh, and it'll populate that into my solid workspace table. There's an extra column just because I double clicked on the feature first. I'm going to go and get rid of that. I'll just right click and delete. Uh, so now I have my two columns I'm working with. And I'll go and change my uh, second value here uh, to match what I want. Okay. Uh, from here, I do need to uh, make sure that I uh, rebuild um, just so I see the changes. I can either do just the one config or all the configs. Uh, but then I also need to save my table. Uh, this is the, the biggest importance. Anytime you make a change, you got to save the table. If you don't save the table before you hit the OK, uh, all the information is not going to be stored. Even a regular change, you'll have to uh, go back and redo it. So back over on my configuration tab, you see I now have a tables folder. Right click, show tables, and I've got my stored values here. Suppose I wanted to actually go and change the uh, the primary value name of that one of the dimensions there. Well. I go into the modify box and I go and type in uh, my new name of my primary value for that particular dimension. Uh, real easy to do uh, from the modify box, but I go and hit OK there. Uh, watch what happens when I get back into the uh, show table um, after I made that change. It actually removes that value because it no longer has the, uh, the name of it. So I'm going to go and add it back in, uh, get rid of the extra column that I don't need. And I'll go and save my table. Uh, and then from here, I can actually change my value name in here. Uh, and it'll actually update in both places. Again, make sure you save. Go and hit OK there. Uh, so now when I bring up the prim my dimensions, you'll see that the primary value name has the new name there. Okay. So make sure you do those from the table, not from the modify box when you're using the solid workspace tables. Okay. So Moving on, I actually have a few features I want to control in a separate table. So I'm going to hold control down and pick these individually. They could be spaced out, or I could also use the, the shift select method uh, to go through and grab a bunch of items. This time, rather than a dimension, I'm doing a configure feature. I'll go and add myself a new configuration name. And real quickly, I can go through and suppress uh, those particular features for this configuration. Give it another name, so I'm just going to call this uh, my uh, my second table there. You can put spaces in there. I typically don't myself, but that's just how I am. Uh, and again, make sure you save. Hit the OK there. All right, so you'll see that I've got my new table, uh, all of our configurations here that I can switch between. Uh, and again, this is just uh, suppressing those items in the the feature tree. Okay. Configuration name at the top. And when I switch to another configuration, those four holes come back again. All right. Uh, so let's go and uh, add a, another type of configuration. Uh, I actually want one with no holes and no fillets. Um, 
So I'm going to do a drive configuration. Drive configuration is essentially a, a configuration of a configuration. Anything that happens at the top level uh, trickles down to the parent item. So I'm going to go and uh, select these two fillets and do a uh, configure feature on them. But rather than adding a regular configuration, I'm going to go back to my no holes configuration, right click, and then add a drive configuration. Uh, so this becomes essentially a, a child configuration of the top level there. Uh, so by going through uh, adding this to the, uh, the no holes configuration, um, anything that occurs at the no holes will also occur at the top level. Alright, so I am going to go and check both of these. Hit OK there. Um, but those items aren't actually being controlled um, in a table just yet. So I'm going to go into my second table, show the table, uh, and let's go and bring in those uh, fillets here. So double click on them. Uh, you'll see that they're still in their, their check state or suppressed state for that drive configuration. The yellow is indicating that they're taking on or their unique uh, setting uh, relative to or different than the parent. Um, again, save the table. Um, all right, so let's go and take a look at a few other buttons here. There's a flip uh, rows and columns button, so we'll reverse those two for us. Uh, there's a uh, show custom properties, and this allows us to actually go and add config specific properties uh, at um, well the within this table here, rather than having to go into our regular file properties button. And again, it's just a convenience thing. Uh, I'll go ahead and close that out. And there is also a all parameters. Typically, I don't use this because I don't want all values brought into my um, into my tables here. I only like to see the ones that I've saved or stored with my values. So as I go to my drive configuration, it has no holes and no fillets once I get to it. But my parent one still has the fillets. So drives uh, essentially allow you control subsets of it there. Okay. All right. So. Let's go on one step further here. So I'm going to actually go into my uh, insert menu, come down to tables, and I'm actually going to grab a design table. Uh, design tables are essentially Excel based tables. Um, so I can either do a blank one, which I don't advise. Usually, if you do have several configurations, auto creates a great one. Uh, another one uh, as an option is the from file, and you can actually link it to an external uh, file there. So you just have to go browse for it. We're going to go with an auto create here. We've got a couple of edit controls. Do we want uh, to allow changes at the model or do we want to block them at the model and only be able to change them at the, the part level? The other parameters down here is essentially does it, do we want it to look for new items as we add them in? So I'm just going to go and hit OK and it's going to go and create our Excel based uh, design table. Uh, you do have to have Microsoft Excel on your machine. Uh, I'll go and expand it out here. And you'll see this table actually is con contains the same information as our SOLIDWORKS based table, but it's held in Excel. We have our configurations, we have our descriptions column, callers. This column is actually showing where whether it's pulling a config specific name or the document name. So that's the, the dollar sign C or D. Uh, and then we go through and we go into our rest of our values here. Uh, the field is actually blank, uh, but it will populate the next time we actually go into the table there. Uh, you'll see um, design table shows up in the, uh, the folder there. And all the uh, configurations controlled by the design table have the, uh, the X on there. So I'm going to go and edit table in new window here now. This will open full-blown Excel, um, or the table in full-blown Excel. I'm going to go and zoom in here so you can see it a, a lot better. Uh, but we have the same columns. You'll see that the field's populated. Um, biggest thing, if you're filling in a table, though, you can't have any blank rows or blank columns. Reason being is it'll actually stop reading anything below your blank row. Uh, unless you go through, so any th stuff down below will, will not be uh, remembered. Um, you can get around that if you do a dollar sign user underscore notes then anything on this row uh, can be our notes line but and then it'll still read the information down below so the biggest thing is you have to use that dollar under sign notes there I'm just gonna go and highlight this row just so that it stands out 
Uh, but the biggest thing is uh, you can't have any blank columns or blank rows. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go and actually close out of my um, Excel uh, program. Uh, and the thing to keep in mind is the fact that you don't need to actually save the table because it's an OLE object, ob object linking and embedding. Um, it automatically writes back to the part file. So it is an Excel file within the table. So all the stuff is actually still being controlled, um, this time being a little bit higher level there. All right, so let's go and add another configuration. So I'm going to create a, another generic one here. Go and hit OK, and you'll see that this particular one is still the yellow box or the box shape opposed to the X. Uh, so you can have ones that are being controlled, ones that aren't being controlled. If I go back into the design table, whether in new window or otherwise, it'll prompt me. If I don't highlight that configuration, it won't add it into my table. So keep that in mind. You also get a box down below on that window uh, that'll bring in additional differences in features. Uh, so be aware of uh, those little pop-up windows that come up there. All right. So let's go and uh, close out of the SOLIDWORKS uh, design table. Okay. And you'll see that that new one took over the uh, uh, Excel uh, little X there. Okay. All right, so let's talk about these little uh, X or check boxes that show up next to all the configuration. This is something new in the last few uh, versions. It's essentially storing the information of the configurations. Um, we can actually force that uh, or we can purge the data. So I have my default configuration selected. I've purged the data. All of them went to minus signs. I'm going to rebuild, save, uh, and close out of my part now. So when I open up my part the next time, okay, um, opening up the part, you'll see that the minus sign is still there on all of them. But as soon as I make that configuration active, it actually loads it up into memory and goes to that configuration. If you have real complex parts, uh, this may take a little bit of time to make that active configuration. So what you can do is you can actually mark this configuration to, to be loaded, uh, either from the top or from over the configure itself. And these, uh, the little floppy icon will actually force it to be uh, saved with that particular part. It does make the files a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and open this up here again. So you'll see the green check mark for the default and then the floppy disk. It changed instantaneously to the new configuration or the other configuration. Um, I can also uh, set it for um, all configurations. That way all of them get stored. Again, this does make the files a little bit bigger, uh, but it does make them uh, load the configurations much, much faster here. All right, so I'm going to close out one more time. And let's go and open it. You'll see that they're all saved, but watch how quick it is for me to actually switch between the configurations. It's instantaneously. So be aware that that's there. You can also remove individual configs that you won't use just by right-clicking and remove the mark. I want to bring up this uh, chart here real quick uh, to kind of show the difference between configurations and display states. Configurations are f like physical changes, suppressing, unsuppressing, material properties, part dimensions. Those are all controlled by configurations. Display states, those are more the visual changes, appearances, transparencies, that type of thing. A part is hidden uh, versus a part is suppressed. Uh, so let's go and kind of uh, dive into uh, uh, display states briefly here and just kind of take a look at it. Uh, so down here on our configuration tab, uh, we have our different configurations and each one has a different display state. You'll see that the number is changing as I cycle through it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and change the appearance on uh, this default configuration, default display state. And uh, when I scroll down to my appearances, there is a uh, an option to do this display state or all display states. So I'm just going to do it for this particular display state. Go and accept that. Uh, and you'll see when I go to another configuration, the display state is actually what's causing the, the color to change. So I'm going to go and add another display state uh, and then come back in here and go down to my appearances. Um, do the appearance. And uh, from here, I'll pick out a different color. Uh, but again, this display state only. I go and hit OK. So now I have two different colors. Uh, that I can work with 
um, on this particular configuration. Okay? So if I go to the other configuration, those colors aren't available. Okay? All right, so there is an option down here to unlink them. So if I uncheck this checkbox, you'll see all the display states show up. The first one that's part of default, and the very last one that I created, this display state 9. But they're available for all configurations. So you'll see that I can actually have a, a blue part, uh, but then I'm on the without fillets configuration. Um, so with that checkbox unchecked, it, it separates them. As soon as I check it, it puts them back to the, where they were originally created. So you'll see my default actually has both display states. Whereas this uh, other configuration actually only has the one. Um, all right, so let's go and go um, a little bit further uh, into it and let's go and make a uh, configuration change. I'm going to switch over to my feature tree. I'm going to actually go and change the material. So just like what we had before, I have a configure material option that I can go through. So I can actually set different materials for different configurations. Uh, so I, by default, it's going to bring up our favorites list uh, from our materials. So I'm going to go and pick out a different material. So for this without fillets, it is a different material and only for that one particular configuration. Um, equations also uh, are configurable now. Uh, so if I go into my manage equations, uh, you'll see I have all my configurations showing up here at the top. Um, so I can do equations. I'm just going to do a global variable just to kind of illustrate the, the point here, uh, that the fact that we can have different values for different configurations. All right, so height 1, I'll go and have that set to 6. And I'll go and put the units on here as well, too, just so that it'll track that. This configuration, all configs, or specify. So this configuration, so it's only that configuration. Um, I'll go and create another one here um, uh, just as a uh, control. Oh, it is going to uh, prompt me to save when I switch to a different configuration. Okay. Um, so my control is going to be a, a height uh, 2 uh, value here. And it's just kind of uh, point out the fact that um, one value is going to stay uh, constant there. So I'll go and get that in. I'll put a units on it as well. Okay. And I'm going to go and change this one here. Go and set that to a, a different value. Switch back to my default. Prompts me to save. Goes back to my original. And again, these are just global variables, but the equations are done real similar. Switch to my other one, and you'll see that the value updates there. I'll go and type in a, a value here, or the, the units, uh, just to get that on there as well. But easy enough, configurable equations now. All right, so let's uh, continue on and uh, let's go and uh, switch back to the default configuration. And then I'm going to go up to my sub assembly here. And the ideas that we've used all at the part level configurations, those actually all apply to the top level configurations, or the sub assemblies, I guess I should say. Uh, so you'll see that my part is currently set to the default configuration. Um, with 14, I can uh, pick from the drop-down. Um, I do need to uh, uh, pick out my configuration and then hit the OK there for it to, to update. Uh, the other way with the older versions, I either left-click or right-click and go Component Properties, uh, and then I would pick out the different configuration from here. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go and uh, create ourselves a, a configuration. Uh, I can easily do a right click and add configuration, give it a name. And this is just the same. I don't need to fill in the description, it'll populate for me. Okay, so I've got another dis configuration. It takes on the same properties as the default because that's where I created it from. And I go component properties uh, and make my change there to the other configuration. Or, a little bit better method would be to right click and I actually have the option to configure component. And again, just like it did with configure dimension, configure feature, it gives me a table. This one gives me the suppression state, but then also the configuration that I want to use um, of that particular part. If I want to, I can go through and give it a, uh, a table name. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily need to do this unless I wanted a, a table out of it. And Make sure you hit the save, go and hit the OK, and easy enough, I have a uh, new configuration 
with the part configuration being controlled. So I can see the, the change there. So default and default. Okay. And again, default of the assembly, default of the part. All right, so let's go one step further. So our top level assembly. Same basic idea here as well, easy enough. Um, besides uh, configuring whether a part is suppressed or unsuppressed, um, you can also do configure of uh, mates as well uh, at assembly level. Uh, so I'm going to go and make a top level one. I'm going to do the um, a configuration handoff here. I say handoff because we you can't just drill down straight into the part level. We have to grab a configuration of the subassembly, uh, and then that subassembly has to grab the configuration of the part itself. And again, ability of saving tables uh, uh, at the assembly level here. But yeah, getting back to the uh, the mate method, you can actually do um, the like a, a distance mate, and you can configure the dimension of the distance mate. And again, easy enough. We you see here that we've got the different configuration. And again, it's only changing the one, that one instance that I uh, right-clicked over. I still have my tables folder, so you'll see the table that I created here. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue on here and uh, dig a little bit uh, further here. Back over here on the, uh, the feature tree there, um, I'm actually going to go to one of the other um, sub-assemblies and then switch its configuration. Again, this is a 14 thing. Uh, for that little drop down. So now that other subassembly is uh, matching the um, the change in the configuration there that is pointed at. All right. Um, again, for this particular configuration, uh, explode views. Uh, explode views. Uh, you actually have the ability of doing multiple explode views uh, per configuration. Didn't used to be that way. Older versions of SolidWorks, uh, you could only do one configuration or one explode view per configuration. So the biggest thing is, depending on if you're using a newer or, or older version, it's been around for at least two or three versions a, as of this point, which the 2014 version just came out. Um, but you can have multiple um, explode views per configuration here. All right, let's go and take a look at drawings. And we'll go and open an existing drawing. I'm going to start out with the, the top level assembly. You'll see that I've got the configurations that I used or created for that particular one. Okay, um, I'll go and uh, see that I've got the different explode views available uh, when I'm on the configuration that has explode. When I go to the subassembly view, uh, you'll see that I've got the configuration that I created here. Okay, uh, and when we go down to the part level, you'll actually see. Um, the different versions of the uh, the part level. Uh, with this particular one, though, I did also add some display states, so I can make those changes as well. So this one only has one display state. I'm going to go back to the default configuration. And you'll see that I've got the two different display states there. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, you may need to do rebuild sometimes for these uh, changes to show up on your drawing view. Thank you for watching this Digital Dimensions CADcast, and have a great day.